Let's have a look at what Ben Buckley, the North Melbourne president, he's not part of the boys club, but here's what he had to say, uh, Caroline, about uh, the discussion about North Melbourne maybe again having a question mark over their existence. He says, it's bloody disappointing. That's rumour mongering which is unnecessary, unwarranted and has no basis. Now, to your point, Kara, you're reporting what you're hearing from your investigations, OK? So I can't... Can I just interrupt yeah. here? I'm amazed that if Ben Buckley thought this was rumour-mongering and there was absolutely nothing in it and this was just... And I'm not saying he said it was because of some past issue I might have had with James Brayshaw or some codswallop like that. Why would he go to the trouble of putting out a media statement? I mean, I, it, it absolutely flummoxed me. I'm hearing a lot of things. Everything is on the table, Ed, at the moment. Gillan McLaughlin has made some comments we'll listen to in a moment. I'm just telling you the comment that I keep hearing. And you might say it hasn't been going on in your war room cabinet conversations, but trust me, Ed, it's happening at lower echelons of every football club. Caro, your point is right in that, yes, people are looking because the first thing that comes into anyone's mind in these situations is fear and defensiveness within their own organisations. Don't shoot the messenger, Ed. No, I'm not shooting the messenger. I'm saying what's going on like you are. I'm defending actually your point that that is what's going on. But then there is this broader picture that we try to get to the 18, get them in, get them out. But we'll come back on that one, OK, because Sam McClure is with us. Sam, you, this is starting to develop. Even a couple of old soldiers have started to put their head up and take a, a pot shot here and there. Good evening to you, Ed. Yeah, well, Caro says there con there's concern from other clubs. There's also, as I can report to you tonight, concern from a man, Ron Joseph, who helped drag North Melbourne out of the doldrums in the 1990s. The former power broker now believes that his club faces an excruciating task of keeping his club once again from relocating. He's told me tonight, I've been saying to the North supporters since we won the battle for the Gold Coast, now is the battle of Tasmania. I think North Melbourne has been identified as the club they'd like to head up AFL football in Tasmania. He went on to speak about current chairman Ben Buckley and says he thinks it's an insult at the North Melbourne Football Club that he runs his presidency from Sydney. A football club needs a president who is hands-on. Now, Ron Joseph was a key power broker at North Melbourne when the AFL tried to send them north to the Gold Coast and then again in 2010 when Andrew Dimitriou and Gillan McLaughlin put a deal to then chairman James Brayshaw for seven home games to be played in Tasmania. I've since gone back to North Melbourne. Their current Chief Executive Officer, Ben Amafio, has provided this statement with me in response in regards to his current chairman, Ben Buckley. I've never worked with a chairman who's been this engaged or involved. I think it's sad and disappointing to describe him as anything other than that. Ben Amafio also telling me tonight that they, as Ben Buckley said in his statement, remain steadfast in their desire and their absolution that they will stay in Victoria and pointing to the fact that they have reduced $9 million worth of debt in nine years, Ed. And signed up sponsors. And I'm not sure... That if was, Ron... in fact, oh. Carl Delina, who they let go last oh. year, who helped the club reduce that $9 million worth yeah, well, of debt. Yeah, well, he did his job. Yeah, Ben's had, ben Buckley, nothing against Ben, but living in Sydney. But Ben had a poor year last year. They had an enormous, ridiculous payouts to people that shouldn't have happened. But the point Sam makes about Tasmania is that James Brayshaw did that deal with Gillan McLaughlin and Andrew Dimitrio that was stymied at the last minute, you would remember, by Jeff Kennett to play seven games in Tasmania. He did that deal, James, without taking it to the members and a lot of them are still filthy about that. And that's, Ed, let me finish no, with the facts. Oh, this is okay. my story. Okay. Sorry, Ed, I know no, you no, like go. to run the whole show, but I want to say something here. The host. I... Yeah, and I'm here too. Go. And this is, this is what has happened. North Melbourne don't want to go to Tasmania. I understand that. Tasmania don't want North Melbourne. That is the last thing Tasmania wants, and I don't believe it should happen. Tasmania want their own team, and if they could have a team that wasn't their own team, it would be Hawthorne. At the moment, all of that's off the table, I understand, but the Tasmanian task force has come out today and said, we are still looking at 2025 for the, the licence. Whatever happens, North Melbourne is the last club they want there. In fact, when they renegotiate the deal beyond next year, I don't think they want North Melbourne there either way. Leave that for a second. I just want to address Ron Joseph's drive-by of Ben Buckley living in Sydney. I don't know if anyone's realised, but we're all working remotely at the moment. Doesn't matter where you are these days, you can... Well, I made that comment about Sydney I don't Sydney think David before. Kosh is doing a bad job running the uh, Port Adelaide side out of well, Sydney. Well, you were there for two and years and I ran and then you Collingwood came... for two years Yeah, but then Sydney. you came back again because no, it I came was back because I came back, but it wasn't because I wasn't running Collingwood in, in a proficient but you manner. Thought, you thought very, very briefly about giving it away at one point. You yeah, did. well, it was because I was running the Nine Network, not because yeah, I couldn't run the Yeah, and because you were living in Sydney. Yeah, but, but that doesn't matter. It's, my point is that these days you can do that. The 
president can be mobile. I don't think that's a, an issue whatsoever. If he thinks that he's not doing a good job, and you're saying that, that's it's fair enough. It's extraordinary the pile-on. It was know. one of the most ridiculous pile-ons at the, playing the woman that I have uh, seen for quite some time. Playing the person, Cara. I don't think they were going here because you're a woman. Well, I'm not going to say play the man, am Oops, I? Oops, say play the person. Let's take the oh. gender <laughs> politics out of it. Okay? Let's have a listen to what Gillian McLaughlin had to say. Because we're going to get into the politics of say. envy in the media Let's, shortly. Ed, Ed, please. Let's have a listen to what Gillian McLaughlin had to say on the subject of 18 clubs, etc. Are clubs at risk of relocation and merger because of this? I'm not going to add to speculation other than to say, right now, our task is preserve our revenue streams, cut costs, raise liquidity, have a, have a focus on the other side so when we can restart, we start with the 18 teams in the locations they are playing AFL football. And after that, does everyone will have their views and speculate what happens longer term. It's just not something I've thought about or buying into. We're just... We're dealing with the issues at hand. Now, the reason why you've got to be careful these days if you've got anything to do with football is every single word is being analysed because there is no football to report. Now, Carrie, you and I have been around the media for a long time. We know that people want to jump on it, and I'll get to that point a little bit later well, we on. we analyse what Gillen says, Ed, because <laughs> Gillen McLaughlin chooses his words very carefully. What he's saying there is no-one's being relocated, 18 clubs are going to survive this, but beyond that, everything's on the table. Because the game, we know how perilous it is. Yeah, everything's on the table and everything's off the table because we don't know even where the table is at the moment, which is agreeing with what you're saying. But I think what we have to look at tonight, and hopefully we can have a, a good debate and a good discussion, is the emotions from both sides. The media have got to get a story. They have to look for something. There has to be a common enemy. You're either hero or zero in the media these days if you're going to get clickbait. On the other side of things, let's roll Do some of the video over the years. Hang on, going hey, it's my story. It's my story. That, hang on, that, my story, wrong. Caro. Hey, let me have a go. Have a look at the, the passion all those years ago when the Western Bulldogs were going to be forced to merge with Fitzroy. Have a look what happened when Melbourne were going to merge with Hawthorne. Have a look at all the stories. Carrie, you and I have been around long enough that we remember when a deal was done in the 80s for North Melbourne and Melbourne to merge and the thing only fell over because they couldn't work out who the president was going to be. They had the name, they had the Melbourne Kangaroos, they were going to have a red yoke with blue and white stripes, play at the MCG, call the Melbourne Kangaroos, train at Arden Street and it fell over because they couldn't get the presidency sorted out. These things are what people, when they hear stories on Footy Classified, if you're a North Melbourne supporter, you go to bed and your whole life is turning upside down. Oh, no, not again. Sponsors it's our start job ringing to up, memberships stop coming. No, but I'm just telling but you it, what happens, it, I, of what happens at our side, our side, being and a football person in a club. Every time something like this happens, your next week is completely smashed. So, so you're sitting here in a way hopelessly conflicted at no, the moment. No, giving both sides of the equation. Yeah, no, but you're hopelessly conflicted on the fact that you're saying that it's so terrible for clubs. I'm sorry that North Melbourne people See, are feeling vulnerable. Let me finish. No, can I go to just, I'm I sorry just they're feeling vulnerable. There, but what I'm saying is, Ed, it is so stupid to point the finger at the media every time there is a negative story at the moment. We are doing the job we do every year. Yes, there are no games but I tend to report on the off-field stuff anyway. Yeah. Last week it was the players' blue and people said that was a media invention. It wasn't. But Karen... Ed, it wasn't. The AFL were filthy with Paul Marsh. The clubs were filthy with some of the things the yeah, players were saying. You're always filthy in a we, negotiation we, until you get to the end. And it's our job to report it. Stop hosing There's everything no down. Like that. But Don't saying... ever accuse me, who was an old-fashioned journo, of going for clickbait. That is just... Boulder Dash. Oh, now, Caro, I'll, I'll give you an example. You said to me then, I'm hopelessly conflicted, as opposed to, you've got insight on both sides here. Yeah, well, you're that as well. Which one's the headline that gets the, the click? Hopelessly convicted or so, uh, conflicted or somebody who actually might have an, un, an insight into both sides of the situation? We all use powerful I understand. language here. I do four hours of radio every morning. I'm on at five o'clock till six o'clock. I'm on here tonight. I'm on the media probably more than anyone. I understand what you have to do to keep people interested. But at the same time, when we're in a war mode and a crisis situation, any news that comes out that might be speculative... Right, and you've got. It, but when the AFL, As what I North said, Melbourne be I saying? Made it quite clear it was speculative. When the CEO comes out, when the chairman of the AFL sends out a release yesterday saying 18 in, 18 out, that's the way we're going to go for. They're <laughs> reacting because their club comes under enormous pressure. Can Ross, can Ross up, get a word members. in here? Ross, you're next.